In the fall of 1862, the American Civil War had raged into its second year. Confederate President Jefferson Davis and General Robert E. Lee, commander of the Army of Northern Virginia, were mindful of the possibility that the recent string of Confederate battlefield victories in the Eastern Theater, first at Manassas in 1861, the Virginia Peninsula in 1862, and a second victory at Manassas in 1862 could, if immediately followed up by a powerful Confederate victory on Union soil, take the pressure off of war-torn Virginia, better sustain Lee's army, and possibly influence impending U.S. congressional elections in the South's favor. Moreover, this powerful Confederate victory might persuade European nations to recognize the Confederacy. On the other side, President Lincoln was counting on Major General George B. McClellan, commander of the Union Army of the Potomac, to bring him the victory he needed to keep Republican control of the U.S. Congress and issue a preliminary Emancipation Proclamation that would change the scope and nature of the American Civil War. To this day, Antietam is the deadliest one-day battle in American military history. Fought on September 17, 1862, on the rolling ridge lines near the town of Sharpsburg, Maryland, overlooking Antietam Creek, this pivotal battle of the American Civil War demonstrated for the first time that the Union Army of the Potomac, led by General McClellan, could stand against the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia, led by General Robert E. Lee, in the Eastern Theater. The Battle of Antietam began at dawn on September 17th, when Major General Joseph Hooker's Union First Corps mounts a powerful attack on Lee's left flank. Repeated Union attacks and equally vicious Confederate counterattacks sweep back and forth across D.R. Miller's cornfield and the swale in the vicinity of the Dunker Church, now known as the epicenter of the battle. Hooker sees thousands of his Federal troops felled in the corn rows, where he recalled and wrote that, Every stalk of corn in the northern and greater part of the field was cut as closely as could have been done with a knife, and the slain lay in rows precisely as they had stood in the ranks a few moments before. Over 50% of the total casualties on the Antietam battlefield occurred here in the morning hours of the fighting. Meanwhile, toward the center of the battlefield, Union assaults against the sunken road eventually pierced the Confederate center after a terrible struggle for this key defensive position. Unfortunately for the Union, this hard-won advantage is not followed up with further reinforcements or advances, and eventually the Union must abandon their hard-fought gains. In the afternoon, the third and final major assault by Major General Ambrose Burnside's Union Ninth Corps pushes over a bullet-strewn stone bridge at Antietam Creek that now bears his name. Just as Burnside's forces began to collapse the Confederate right flank, Major General Ambrose Powell Hill's Confederate Infantry Division charges into battle after a long march from Harper's Ferry, helping drive back the Union assault and saving the day for the Army of Northern Virginia. General Lee committed his entire Confederate Army of Northern Virginia, totaling 45,000 men, to this battle, while General McClellan sent in less than three-quarters of his Union Army of the Potomac, totaling 87,000 men. With the full commitment of McClellan's troops, which outnumbered the Confederates two to one, the battle might have had a more definitive outcome. Instead, McClellan's cautious approach allowed Lee to hold ground by using his interior lines to shift his forces around to meet all Union threats at the critical times and locations across the battlefield. There are more than 22,000 total casualties at the Battle of Antietam, 12,401 for the Union and 10,316 for the Confederate side making it the single bloodiest day of fighting in American military history. Doctors at the scene are overwhelmed, and so is the American public, when Matthew Brady and his photographic team capture and publish the carnage in American newspapers. During the night, the two armies tend to their wounded and consolidate the positions, but neither side renews the fighting the following day. On the night of the 18th, Robert E. Lee moves his army back across the Potomac to Virginia via Boatler's Ford. McClellan attempts a limited pursuit, but is thwarted by Lee's rear guard near Shepherdstown, Virginia. Lee's army then slips away into the relative safety of the Shenandoah Valley, and the war continues. Despite a tactical stalemate on the field, this Union strategic and operational level victory gave President Abraham Lincoln the confidence to issue the preliminary Emancipation Proclamation at a moment of strength as opposed to desperation a move that would dramatically change the scope and aims of the American Civil War from one of simply restoring the Union to a campaign for human freedom that would require the conquest and physical occupation of the states in rebellion.